One of the most common questions that I still see to this day about the Ender 5 Plus is, how do I properly level the bed using this interface? Well, in this video, I'm going to do my best to demystify it, whether you are a first time Ender 5 Plus user or you've been using it for a while and have just barely got it working. In this video, I'm gonna show you step by step how I level the bed on this printer and hopefully we will get you leveling your bed and get you printing smoothly without any problems. Hey, I'm Chris, this is Curzy Fabrications and we are going to jump straight in to using this printer. Let's get going. So to get started with the bed leveling process, we need to do two things. First of all, we need to get this side of the bed mounting plate level with this side of the bed mounting plate. Now, what do I mean by level in this instance? I mean level with the X gantry, meaning that this side of the bed is the same distance from the X gantry as this side of the bed. And the only thing we need to do that is a ruler. Any ruler will do. I like the ones that actually start on zero because it means I'm starting at zero. So to do this, let me show you the process. We are just going to come over here, set your ruler onto that mounting plate, and then measure the distance between the mounting plate to the bottom of the X gantry. It's a pretty easy process. And then we're just going to move to any common measurement that's easy for you to tell. So I might choose eight and a half. I'm pretty close to that. So I'm going to choose eight and a half and I'm going to manually, then you'll see down here, I'm manually turning this screw to the eight and a half mark. All right. Now, if those motors are engaged, it may click a little bit. You're not hurting anything. Everything's okay. Now, if your motors aren't engaged, it's going to be a lot easier to move. No big deal one way or the other. So I'm going to line that up at eight and a half. Then I'm going to come over to the other side. Now, when I'm on that side, again, I want it to read eight and a half. Now, once that's done, that first step is complete. We are ready for the next step. Step two, we're going to come right down here under the bed. So right underneath the bed here, you'll see that there are two aluminum bars. There's the top one, which is mounted directly to our bed, and you see the bottom one, which is where these screws are mounted. Now what we want to do is we want to create just a little bit of an air gap between these bars. And what that allows us to do is have a good, mostly level to start from, but make sure that we can both go down and up a little bit when it comes to the manual leveling process. So what I want to do here is just make sure that there's a couple of millimeters, maybe two, three, four, nothing specific here, but that there's a little room on each corner, and then that is about the same all the way around the bottom of the bed. That gives us a good level to start with before we actually start manually leveling the bed. So we'll go around here, we'll make sure that this is about the same air gap all the way around. And then we're happy with that and we can move on to the manual leveling process. Now for the next several steps in this process, there are three different ways that you can measure the distance between the bottom of the nozzle and the print bed. Number one, the sheet of paper. Now the sheet of paper has been used and touted for a long period of time as the go-to. Why? Because everyone has a sheet of paper, but there are several problems with this. Number one, is your sheet of paper the same as my sheet of paper? Are you using an index card? Number two, when you go to actually test to see how it feels underneath the nozzle, is it supposed to be tight? Is it supposed to be loose? How much is it supposed to scratch? These are all questions that actually don't have very good answers, no matter which one I tell you. So I'd rather you not use this method unless this is the only thing you have. Number two, this is a thickness gauge. These are cheap. These are available on Amazon. These are available in most hardware stores. They're pretty easy to find. And as you can see here, they come in a lot of thicknesses. Now what you'll want to do for this process, if you choose to use the thickness gauge, is find your thinnest thickness gauge. In this case, mine is 0.04 millimeters or 0.0015 inches. Now if you use this, it's pretty easy to tell. It either fits under there or doesn't. There's not a lot of different scratchiness that you can have. It either fits or it doesn't. You'll just want a little bit of resistance, but not too much. It shouldn't be hard to get it under there. Now the final method, and honestly the most precise, if you're ready for it, 
is to just eye it across the bed to see if you can tell that when the nozzle is touching the bed, you're actually exactly where you want to be. Now, this is a more advanced way of doing it. If you're not ready for that, that's fine. For this demonstration, I will be using the thickness gauge. It is the best of both worlds. It is a given thickness that everyone will know, as well as a very easy way to tell if you're in the right spot. So we're gonna be using this thickness gauge. Now we're ready to begin the process. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to our screen and we're gonna hit temp. And we are going to hit manual and I'm going to set the nozzle to 100. And then we're gonna set the bed to 60. Now we're going to let this heat up. Now it's been shown on some other channels that this process is not strictly necessary, but this is a tried and true way to make sure that there is no expansion of the bed or the nozzle that is going to change your measurements once everything heats up. So we're gonna let this heat up, 200 here, 60 on the bed, because those are the typical print settings for PLA. Once that's all heated up, we'll be ready for the next step in the process. All right, we're all heated up and ready to go. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back in the menu, back again. Then I'm going to go to settings and we're gonna go straight to the leveling menu right here. What that's going to do at this point, that is going to home our printer, which will take it to the X and Y in this corner, and then home the Z in the middle. Now let's watch what this printer does. I don't know exactly where we're going to be versus the bed, so let's see where it takes us. So there it's found the bed. Now, ugh, that really pushed into our print head and this is not good. Don't freak out though, we're about to fix this problem. So whether yours homed and pushed it up like we just had, or it homed and there's still a huge gap, we're about to fix that problem. Now, if it keeps pushing up, don't freak out. Do cut it off though. We don't want to damage your printer. Check out the forums and the boards. There will be people to help you with that. That's beyond the scope of this particular video. But let's go ahead and get this printer fixed so that it'll stop pushing this up. Notice over here, we have our Z home. This right here is our Z offset. And what we're going to be doing here, is we're gonna be moving the bed. We're gonna be creating a gap between the nozzle and the bed. And again, I'm gonna be using my handy dandy thickness gauge to actually measure this once we get a lot closer. So first thing I wanna do is increase the gap by using Z plus, and that is going to create more of a gap. So Z plus right here on the menu, will create more gap. And then we will get a gap here. And I'm gonna move the camera for you real quick so you can see what I'm seeing. So as you can see right here, there is a gap between. I finally moved them far enough apart to where there's a gap between them. Now what I can do is I can actually stick my gauge between them and then go to the Z minus to narrow that gap out. Now at some point, I'm going to actually be touching the gauge and if I go one too far it'll be too tight and not fit. I kind of like it right there it's pretty tight but it's definitely not too loose you kind of see a little bit of a gap. That right there is going to be my Z offset and so what I'm going to do I'm going to hit the Z home button and let's watch it it should rehome the printer one more time and then if everything worked correctly it will leave that same exact gap when we come back. Now right here, it's actually a little bit tighter than what I left it. And you know what I can do? I can do it again and not worry about it. So I'm gonna increase that gap again with my Z plus. That gives me that gap back. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hit Z home again. And we're gonna see if it puts it this time back where I expect it to. You don't have to accept it where it leaves it when it goes through this process, you can do it again until you're happy with it. Try to get it reproducible. So let's see if that's what we get this time. There we go. Now this time, it's exactly where we left it. Two times, now we get what we're expecting. So once we get to this point, we are ready for our aux leveling procedure. Aux leveling is manual leveling. Notice it has the little feet down here at the bottom, the little screws down underneath the bed that we're going to be using 
to level this off. So we're going to go to aux leveling. Now when it does this, again, it's going to home one more time using that Z offset that we just set. All right, now following the same procedure that we just used to find our Z offset, we're going to go around to the four corners of the bed doing the exact same thing, finding that exact same gap that we found in the center of the bed, but around the corners. And again, just like last time, we're going to do it. Then we're going to reset and we're going to see if we're happy with it. If we're not happy with it, we're going to do it again. And we're going to continue that process until we're happy with it. One time around will probably not be enough. Two times around might be enough. So let's find out. We're going to go ahead straight here to the front left corner of the printer to point two. All right, now let's find out if we're happy with it. Now right here, my gap is a little too far. I can move this freely underneath here. So I'm going to twist it to the right until I'm happy with about the gap that we saw when we were doing our Z offset. And then we're good. So then we can come to the point three on the other corner. Okay, how's this one? A little, well, actually, I'm pretty happy with that one. I'm going to leave that one right where it is, at least for this pass, and we're going to go to the back right corner. Okay, this one, this one's definitely too tight. So I'm going to loosen it by turning it to the left, and I'm happy with that one now, and we're going to move to the back. All right, on this one, let's see, I'm happy with that one too. So actually, by doing that first go around that I mentioned in the first two steps, I've actually done a pretty good job of setting myself up for success. I can loosen this one just a little bit. There we go. Now that moves a little bit freer. Now I can go ahead and hit point one if I want to. Let's just see how we're doing so far. Right here, it's a little loose, but not bad at all. In fact, keep in mind the center of your bed may be a little low. It may be a little high. If it's not quite what you would expect compared to the four corners, the measured bed leveling will take care of that when we actually start the printing process. But just to make sure that we're happy with this, I'm going to go ahead and back out at this point, go back into the aux leveling, which will rehome the printer one more time. Then we can go around again and see if we were happy with what we did the first time we did the manual bed leveling. All right, same thing as last time. We're going to go to the front left. All right, that is good and tight. We're happy with that one. We're going to move to the front right. Again, that's pretty spot on. I'm going to tighten it just a touch, but I'm happy with it. We're going to go to the back right. Okay, this one, happy with that one. That one actually worked out. And then we're going to go to the back left. Okay, that one's good too. Now let's check out our center just to see how we're doing. See how warped the center of our bed may be. Okay, looking at that, it is a little lower in the center of my bed than it is around the four corners. And again, that's all right. That's not the end of the world. So we're happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and back this out now. And then, now we're to the easy part. Let's go ahead and do the measured bed leveling. Now this is going to go through, it's going to actually measure 16 different points on the bed and we're going to actually get a mesh that defines this bed and that's what we're going to be using to print in the future. Now's a good time. You can either watch this go through the process or you can ready that first file for printing. Now what type of file do we want for printing? I recommend that you get something with a decent size base 
Make sure you include plenty of perimeter so that we can actually see it print. We need plenty of time on that first layer to get our Z offset just right. So slice you up a file, maybe a big cube, maybe just a big grid pattern that you find on Thingiverse, whatever works for you, slice that up, get ready for that first layer, and we'll be right back when this is done. So a quick word on what we see here on the display. So these are the measurements across the display. Again, we've got 16 different points here. And this actually turned out to be a beautiful example of what you want to see. You'll notice that the tenths place is a zero on every single one of these, which means that the difference in measurement is less than a tenth for every single point. Now this is ideal, this is really what we're going for here. So if you get something like this, it means you've done a really good job with your manual bed leveling. But as we saw before, you'll notice that the difference between the center four points and the outside points are a little different. And again, that's fine. Again, there's not a lot of difference here and the difference will be compensated by, by the firmware. So at this point, we can go backwards, backwards again, now we can run our first test print. We're going to hit print. And there, this is the 200 millimeter test pattern that I created a while back. I'll link to this in the description. And the reason I like this is because it uses up a large portion of the bed while not necessarily going edge to edge. So I'm going to get hit print here and we're going to begin. Now, while this heats up to the temperatures I had set in my slicer, I'm going to go ahead and hit the adjust menu and we're going to be ready to go here. Now notice, this is my Z offset currently. It is currently set to negative 1.89. Now we can adjust this as we go. And we're gonna do that here. We're gonna actually watch it print. And as it's printing, we can make small adjustments on the fly, whether we are getting the proper distance between the nozzle and the bed. And we're going to just do a purge line over here. We're not really going to pay attention to that. It's not really in the print area that we're looking for. So we're going to just let that happen. All right, now as this starts to print, we want a line that does not have a bubble on top, but, but actually has kind of a flat top to it and definitely doesn't move like this one is moving. That's not what we want. So we need to get a little bit closer. So our offset needs to go down. We need to shrink that down a little bit. And what we want to do is we, again, we want to get close to the bed and we want a nice flat top on that extrusion. And we don't want it doing this mess here. So I just, I'm going to pull this off, get it out of my way while this is going. It will keep going and I'm going to keep making this a little tighter until I'm happy with the extrusion. Not quite there yet. We're getting closer. Now, as I told you, by doing a larger print that takes up more of the bed, we have longer to do this. If you were to choose a small print, you wouldn't have all this time to get this right. So let's see how this is working at this point. It's looking really good. I'm liking this distance. Notice it's not coming off the bed anymore when I move my finger across it. We want to go a little bit smaller to get a good squish. There we go. I think I'm pretty happy with that one. And so the distance here between what I had originally measured and what I'm actually printing with, it's pretty big number. We're talking about, what, about a 0.6 difference. So that's pretty extreme. Are you going to have this number? Are you going to have a different number? I won't know. There's no way to tell. Um, it really just depends on how your bed leveled and what this offset ultimately just becomes. Maybe I need to be a little closer because we're losing a little bit of the filament there. Again, this is the calibration process. Don't freak out if things don't work out exactly like you would expect them to. We can always start this print over. We can do it again. We don't have to have this first print be perfect. We want to get this down so that when we do our future prints, the ones that actually matter, that they're right. So I'm getting happier and happier with this as we go. Again, 
we got stuff that's not working out here. This is fine. Maybe I need a little bit more nanopolymer adhesive on here. Or a little bit more glue stick to get everything to stick correctly. It's fine. It's not a big deal. We'll fix that at some point in the printing process. What I still want to see is that, again, I've got a good bead here. And I am pretty happy with this distance. Now, I can actually just let this continue printing. I can actually just see how it turns out. It's only like a 17 to 20 minute print, so I can just let it do its job. Or I could actually stop this, reprint it, and do it again, see how it looks. So what I'm seeing now, it is actually on the second layer. We're done with the first layer. We don't need to continue to let this go. So I am going to stop it at this point. Yes, I want to stop printing. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't home like I hoped it would. And so we're going to move. We're going to then just move the bed down a bit so that it doesn't stay up against our print. We're going to disable the motors. And then we can just move that back. Now what I want to do, I'm going to clean off this print bed. I'm going to restart that print one more time. We're going to see how it turns out. Now what I can do before this even starts printing, I can go ahead and hit adjust. Let's make sure that this number was the number that we remembered setting it to at the, you know, when we were happy with that last print. So we're happy with this. This is that negative 2.38 number, not that negative 1.9 or whatever we started with. So we should be good here and we're just going to let it go. Now if you want to go ahead and bring up that adjust menu like we did last time in case you need to make any adjustments, that's fine however you want to do it. I'm going to kind of trust my numbers here to begin with, and then we'll go from there. All right, I'm liking my purge line here. Notice you can see the nice orange color, but it is definitely not too thick. But this is actually way too close. So we're going to need to back that off so that we can actually see a little bit of a gap there. There we go. So again, just minor adjustments as we do these first few prints. And then this will stabilize, or I sure hope it will, so that we don't have to continue doing this on every print. So at this point, it doesn't appear that it's too happy with our mesh. So it looks like I actually need to start over for some reason. So I'm going to actually go through the manual leveling process again, do the automatic bed leveling. We're going to make sure all that is right and that it's happy with it. And then I will start this test print over. All right, so as I mentioned last time, I just redid everything and did it again. Started over, not a big deal. You are starting from your last settings, which gives you a good starting point because you know that was good and level, but sometimes it needs a little bit of tweaking. So this one's going down really well. I'm gonna see if this one will finish for me, and then I'll have a good baseline for my next print, just as I mentioned. And you also always have that adjust menu going forward in case you need to make any changes. So as you can see here on the print bed, the print actually finished and it looks pretty good. Bottom layer looks nice, but it's not a perfect print. You'll notice that there's some pulling off over here in the corner and that happens. So let me finish this video off by telling you, well, hey, Chris, why isn't this a perfect print? Why didn't you show us the ideal process? Well, I wanted to show you a real process. This is me actually going through it with you and showing you that I had to go around the print bed a couple of times. I had to stop a test print and restart a test print. I wanted to actually show you what this process looked like. It's not always ideal. Sometimes your first test print will be great. Sometimes your first leveling will be great. Sometimes it won't. But once you get it dialed in, Hopefully things will go really well and your future prints will go good with just a little bit of adjusting sometimes when you start that first layer. But again, the whole point of this video was to show you the actual process, what I went through to get my first test print going, and you have it right here on the print bed. So again, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it showed you the process of how to get your Ender 5 Plus printing properly and to actually give you a real feel of 
how someone that knows what they're doing actually goes through the process of getting a printer up and running. If you notice, this video did not have a sponsor. So who's this video sponsored by? Well, it's sponsored by my Patreon supporters right here. These folks are the ones that keep this channel going, whether I'm publishing five videos a month, no videos a month, or just helping people in the group. I want you to know that these guys are the ones that are as big a part of Curzy Fabrications as I am, so thanks to all of them. So if you want to help this channel, if you want to keep this kind of content coming, please think about joining my Patreon. If not, just thanks for watching. I hope these videos have been useful to you in your 3D printing journey. I hope you're enjoying your Ender 5 Plus and continue to check out this channel. I'm going to have more projects, more Ender 5 Plus content, more other printer content, if you are thinking about expanding your collection. So again, thanks for watching. I'm Chris, this is Curzy Fabrications, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.